All right. Hi, everybody. We're back with Dr. Eric Serrano. You can tell he's a baseball fan and baseball season's kicking in. Uh, okay, so uh, another question for you. Um, and I have a lot of uh, male clients that are in their 40s and 50s, and some of them are in their 60s. And, <clears throat> you know, obviously as you get older, your hormone, hormones can decline with age. And um, several of these folks uh, are on hormone replacement therapy, and they take uh, small doses of growth hormone. And um, so the question is for these folks uh, in terms of taking their growth hormone and optimizing it, what do you think uh, for someone, you know, that's using a small hormone hormone replacement dose, what do you think is the best approach to using it? With, you know, before training, after training, at night, you know, wh whatever. But just your general thoughts. Okay, first of all, I want to say I'm jealous. Tell me, because you have a shirt that says, kneel before Zod. Yes. You know, <laughs> come on, they send you that shirt, they didn't send me one. I'm, I'm jealous, but that'd be another day, another time. Uh, welcome to see you back here. Uh, you know, we're talking all that, Jonah, and I want to say, it depends what the person is looking for. First of all, an injection of growth hormone lasts about four hours. I mean, most people think that's boroni. That, yes, it does. Now, why? Because the growth hormone is a protein. It has to be de degraded. It has to go into the liver, and the liver has to make the, the IGF-1, IGF-B1, all those things. Now, that lasts longer. Now, if I would, and you asked me specifically, I said, you know, people say that you should drink carbohydrates after a workout, I take GH. Absolutely, absolutely wrong. How do I know? Because I got thousands of patients that I, they do stuff like that. They come over and I check the levels and I do things like that. Well, to answer very specific to you and your question is, it depends on what that client is looking for. If I'm looking for a patient, a patient or a client that is saying health purposes, it doesn't matter. The response is going to still intact. You're going to get the health response that you want. So just even take it you, whenever if it's for Even health. if you eat carbohydrates, even if you don't eat carbohydrates, you're still going to get that health response Okay. before workouts. Okay. Now, you have a, a guy that wants to get lean and he wants to get lean, but he still wants to have carbohydrates. Yes, you can do that. Now, is it going to be the 100% the result that you were looking for? No, it's not going to be 100%, but you still get 6 to 70% of that response. So it's not that it's not going to happen, it's just going to take longer. So if somebody <clears throat> says you eat a sweet potato and you have insulin response, you can just blunt your growth hormone response. Absolutely false. That's a little silly, huh? It, it, it is absolutely insane. Unless you tell me I only have 10 days to get lean, then I'm going to say, okay, I'm a sweet potato. But okay. no, that is absolutely false. Now, if you are going for muscle mass and using GH, you absolutely will want to have carbohydrates because now you have a double warming after that workout. First of all, the peak of the duration you did an hour or two hours before, it's going to start peaking up. Your insulin levels are going to be started because growth hormone is an anti-insulin. Okay, it's going to increase the insulin levels. Then you pound the sugars or the carbohydrates at that time. Now you have all these receptors, GLUT2, GLUT4. Now they got up to 12, okay? All acting at the same time, all going in there, it's going to go to muscle. So I will definitely do have carbohydrates if I'm talking about mass. So you tell those clients of yours, it depends what the goal is, one. Two is, it depends what dosages are taking, okay? And the timing of those dosages. Now, if I was me, okay, if I ever wanted to do it, I'm a young 25-year-old guy, you know, I would take my GH before the workouts because it makes a huge difference. Why and why is that? Because actually... People will say, oh, but you're prompting your own response. That's the biggest answer I get. But think about this. I'm going on a race. Do I want to go at 40 miles an hour or I want to go 100 miles an hour? I want to maximize everything. Yeah. Okay? So I want to have the 100 mile an hour engine going because I'm going as fast as I can. So I'm going to make sure that I do get my growth hormone shot before because it's going to increase my IGF-1 at that point. The receptors are opening. So I want to increase my maximum amount of hormonal milieu there to do what it's supposed to do in the muscle. That's when I want to have it because it's going to make give me my, my biggest, biggest results. And, and that hormonal milieu that you're talking about, is that kind of just how insulin and IGF-1? Insulin, IGF-1, insulin growth binding protein, everything is working together. I want it at that moment, at that time, I want my engine working at 100%. So peaking while you're training. That's correct. Gotcha. All right, thank you.